it's a very fast moving environment and whatever you have now your skills is what what is likely you're going to apply you can learn additional ones you can go to attend certain programs you get some basics but you're not likely to develop uh, skills in a very short period of time and then you lose the market opportunity so you look at your resume you accumulate the skills that you have now and you see where it is applicable after all it's not about blockchain it's not about cryptocurrencies it's all about business mm -hmm. and uh, you know if you know how to do business and there is a specific industry you are good at just find a project in this industry because they will need you as a specialist that is kate karakovich and this is episode 8 of the blockchain pro podcast Hello and welcome to episode 8 of the Blockchain Pro Podcast. I'm Adriana Bellotti and today I'm especially happy because we got our first review on iTunes. Woohoo! Thanks Jelcar92 for the glowing review. I'm not sure if you all know this but reviews really help with the rankings. So please follow in Jelcar92's footsteps and write one you will have my eternal gratitude. Today's guest is Kate Korokevich. We met in St. Petersburg right after Russia kicked Spain out of the World Cup. That was a plot twist almost as good as the ones we've seen in crypto. And I have never seen so many happy Russians in my life. I had to cut a bit of the audio in the middle of the interview because the celebrations were too rowdy and we couldn't re really hear what we were talking about. Um, here's the cut version. I hope you enjoy it. All right, so why don't we start at the beginning and you tell me and our listeners a little bit about what you were doing before you found crypto. Well, I was in financial industry for quite a long time, maybe about 15 years prior to joining Crypto World. Okay. And uh, shortly after my MBA studies at University of Rochester in the United States, I uh, started my career in finance as an analyst in New York-based hedge fund, Rodman Capital. Uh, and then later on, I continued as an equity sales for uh, Russian securities. And then I ran my own advisory boutique, Galatea Capital, focusing on cross-border transactions. I wanted to say a little bit more about Rodman Capital. I was very lucky to work under the guidance of Errol Rodman himself. He is the man who founded in 1970 and managed all this time until now one of the longest running hedge funds in the United States. Okay. And with the average life cycle of hedge fund of just a few years, it's quite an impressive uh, result it for is. him. And what I did there, my responsibilities were to analyze the geopolitical macroeconomical factors, how they affect the market. Uh, and I watched for industry-specific catalysts, I looked at individual companies, I see what's, what was happening in a variety of industries, uh, ranging from chemicals, oil and gas, metals, IT, infrastructure, telecom, and also retail, banking, and even biotech, which is a very s specific industry. So I accumulated this wealth of knowledge where I could look at the company in a different industry and tell what I think about the business, also, one of the key uh, differentiating points and success uh, of the fund was a deep analysis of uh, decision-making process of the company's management and detailed analysis of the business itself, which uh, gave an opportunity to ask the very precise, very interesting, critical questions about the health of the business and the competitive position of the company. And this is something that uh, helped me to build self-confidence when I looked at the company and acquired the habit of inquisitive mind and not accepting superficial answers from anyone, which mm -hmm. I think it's very important. 
it is very important in this crypto space, especially now that you've you've made the switch. So how did you start working in the crypto? Well, um, my friends approached me in the summer of 2017 asking me to create an idea of the ICO. Like they looked at me as someone creative and uh, knowledgeable about the financial space and we thought for a while we spent a number of evenings uh, dining and whining over that and creating ideas. And one of my friends actually did a successful ICO at the time. It was called Atlant in real estate securitization. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't ready and prepared. Whatever I looked at, uh, the industry was already fooled with uh, another ICO. Then eventually, in October of 2017, I was asked by a friend of mine now and a business partner, Alexander Bayov, to join as an advisor uh, the company called Wolfman. Mm -hmm. The Wolfman is, was focusing and is still focusing on robo-advisors in the crypto space. I uh, stayed with the company until March. I hoped that I was uh, helpful to them. And uh, however, we parted our ways as the company wasn't moving fast enough. And I think they were losing the competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. So I had to leave. Okay. And... What made you want to move from being in the hedge fund management business to working in crypto? Did you see any any synergies or something that were very similar or is just that the crypto space was exploding and it was a good business opportunity? I think if you're you I felt that you either do it or you stay behind. And the earlier you come into the space, the more successful you're likely to be. So I had to just follow, follow my intuition and go in, whatever it takes. And uh, at the moment after, as I mentioned, this story with Wolfman, I joined the company Datecoin that was made a successful ICO as an advisor. Mm -hmm. I was an advisor there. It's artificial intelligence and dating. Mm -hmm. so, and then uh, currently I'm a part of a core team of... Um, company called ICO Max, mm -hmm. which I may tell you more later. Mm -hmm. So how did the crypto job market uh, is looking in your region? It's uh, super active. It's like people, uh, all these like Russian programmers, all the people who are experienced in technology, they're just making a lot of money now because they're very much in demand, uh, both in Russia and outside of Russia. So it's very difficult to find anyone who will write smart contracts, etc. But also the management uh, is in demand. So I think it's a very booming market in Russia. And Russian experts in Russian management uh, are well regarded outside of Russia mm -hmm. and they're demanded around the world. So, so that's, you, that's my impression. You're busy all the time. Well, I'm trying to focus on one or two opportunities. I don't want to... Yeah. <laughs> To do a lot of things at the same time because it's just not the way to work for me. So what are you focusing on now? You mentioned ICO Max. Yeah, ICO Max is a regulatory compliant uh, informational uh, space and also underwriting platform for ICOs. Mm -hmm. And uh, the company is uh, in twenty planning to be in twenty jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's a Canada-based company, and the holding company of ICO Max platform, DigiCrypt, is a publicly listed company on Canadian Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. So this is something very regulated and this is the trend that we will observe in the in the crypto world. More regulations that I think you, you know of. Yes, because um, we are seeing this that just saying that your token is a utility it's not enough you actually have to prove that your token is a utility and not a security and i think it's fine if you if you issuing a token that is a security it's it, it there's no problem with that just mark it as a security and, and follow the rules that you have to follow when you are selling securities right what advice do you give your clients in that sense well i would advise that if you're already in utilities this is your choice and this is of course you have to face a certain consequences of your choice because you will not be able to place certain securities in a certain markets and you have to follow the regulation and the rules but the same goes for security it just became a trend recently and uh, rather a necessity so to to be Access, to access the markets, to access the institutional investors, you are probably better off to be a security token. Mm -hmm. But this is something to be seen as it develops. Mm -hmm. um, and 
I, I'm sure you come across uh, a lot of new people that are coming into the space or people that are just sitting on the sidelines observing and they, they don't exactly know how to start to work in, working in crypto. What advice would you give to, or if any, if, you know, uh, what would you tell your, your best friend if he wanted to come and work in crypto? I think uh, it's a very fast moving environment. And whatever you have now, your skills is what, what is likely you're going to apply. You can learn additional ones, you can go to attend certain programs, you get some basics, but you're not likely to develop uh, skills in a very short period of time and then you lose the market opportunity. So you look at your resume, you accumulate the skills that you have now and you see where it is applicable. After all, it's not about blockchain, it's not about cryptocurrencies, it's all about business. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, if you know how to do business and there is a specific industry, you're good at just find a project in this industry because they will need you as a specialist. That would be my advice. That's very good. And the second advice I think would be, which I think is, is something that people are missing. They're so excited about the opportunity to make money, to make money faster, to be in a space which is, has a lot of hype. They don't look carefully at the management of the company. They don't look carefully at the investors. They have to do a proper due diligence. They have to look who is running the company, what is the business model, who are the investors that are likely to make decisions, and then uh, choose the one, the company that is run by professionals, invested by professionals, and this is the one that is likely to succeed. And after all, the business model has to be very valid. And you are in, you're working with a host of different projects. Um, do you have any favorite tools? Yeah, you know, it's very difficult for me. I am coming more from one-on-one -on -one negotiations and talking to the bosses of the companies and making deals. Going back to kind of 15 years ago and talking to hundreds of people at the same time, uh, I needed to use something. And uh, I'm using the professional networks uh, for connecting with people and also actively using CRM. That helps me. I'm using HubSpot at the moment. I may consider looking at some other tools. Mm -hmm. And uh, I almost feel like creating one myself because for a long time I was in data analyst and analysis in telecom industry. So I understand how to do it. What is on the market, not sure meets my requirements, but I think it's, it's the speed that matters. Well, let's do an ICO for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, something to consider. <laughs> Started working in crypto? Well, I have a few, but the one I want to share, I was in Davos and uh, I was a part of a Russian like, kind of group there and uh, it, it was crazy. I was hoping it's a, it's a world economic forum. And you would expect, you will see the discussions of macroeconomics and like what's happening in the world. No. All the street, all the promenade was filled with activities related to blockchain. And you could see the whole party is devoted to the whole days, uh, the whole like houses and, uh, and sessions. And uh, I went uh, to a hard rock hotel. And there was an event there happening in the chapel, which was a part of the hotel. So you're coming in and you hear this crypto discussions, uh, blockchain discussions, and people call themselves evangelists. They're standing in the middle of the chapel and you feel it's kind of a religion. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, think, uh, I think it's not any longer. It's just a part of another technology that is entering the market that's capturing uh, the minds of people and I hope I, my personal hope is it will bring benefits to the world, economical and uh, more prosperity. And this is for us to see how it will develop and maybe take part in it. Yes, but it's not every day that you literally walk into the church of crypto. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it, was, it was an event yeah, in itself. That's pretty good. Um, what else do we have? Um, We've covered the tools. Uh, how would you explain blockchain for your friends or someone in your family that has not yet come across um, this space? Well, I, d I think blockchain is, in essence, is just another technology like internet that enter in the market. The, the difference, the major difference is that it's not entering in itself. It's like accumulated technologies that unite, and this is artificial intelligence, and this is internet of things. And it's being tested all around the world in different applications like healthcare, smart houses. 
and everything else. And then it's together they are change the world. That's what's happening. And that's fortunately, unfortunately, cannot be stopped. This is my opinion. And uh, once just has to accept its presence in your life. And um, I hope that, again, as I said, it's going to bring some economical efficiencies to the to the to the world. Uh, I think I also wanted to mention uh, about the trends that's happening in the industry, and that's why it's also interesting. You mentioned earlier that how close it is to finance and what the similarities or differences. I think what's happening is like convergence between the standard uh, traditional financial world and crypto crypto world. Mm -hmm. We will see more regulations. We will see also investors that are coming from traditional investments. So. Venture capitalists, private equity funds are already there. You hear mm -hmm. left and right about the large deals being being signed with the with the startups, yeah. uh, and this just the trend is going to continue. Also, a fund of funds uh, of a fund of crypto funds are entering the I know, the arena. I know personally about a few of them. Actually, met met with a few of them, and um, which means that there is an interest from institutional money which in turn means that those companies that previously allocated like few percent to hedge funds, if you look at the past in the history, now they allocated few percent to venture capital funds. And now there is a next step, there's like few percent to crypto funds. And this few percent pretty much multiple times of uh, market, of crypto market today. So if that's happening, if that's happening, that's the crypto market will go up in market cap. It will bloom. Yeah, it will um, just explode. And if you're not part of it, you're just missing an opportunity to to be a part of some next revolution, so to speak. <laughs> I don't want to sound too optimistic or too hype, because you will face a lot of problems going forward with regulations and uh, with uh, validating the business models. But uh, in terms of uh, capital supply, this is what's, what we're going to see. It's just going to be dramatically increase capital supply and you're not talking about five years down the road you're talking about one to two years i think that's what's going to happen it, it will be some crashes it will be companies that will steal money but uh dow i see all that's happening it's like more controls mm -hmm. that being instituted that's uh, hopefully gonna help help the situation okay um one thing that just occurred to me is okay we've just learned how you you came about crypto and why you started working with it but um what mean what was it for you that when you when you realized okay this is brand new this is where the future is going um why did you had to get involved with it no i uh, was there a yeah there are multiple things but it's just an intuition like for example I know a friend of mine, a very famous trader, actually the holder of the world record in trading. Uh, his name is Daniel Zenger. He, in the internet bubble, he made from $10,000, $42 million in 23 months. Wow, so that's... I just wanted to be like him, <laughs> maybe. Uh, and uh, you just have to catch the moment. I may be a little bit late to the table, but uh, I don't for, think so. for the initial, for the initial crazy money, but uh, I'm not even sure if I wanted to make the money this way because it all comes back to you. Uh, if you're just not sure what the business model, you will not be able to actually implement your plans and develop what you promised to the market. You, will, you, know, you, you will end up having a few million dollars in your pocket, but it's likely that you won't be able to do anything else later on. It will be extremely difficult because your reputation will be ruined. Absolutely. So coming now to the market, uh, you could use ICO as one of the tools to raise in capital. But then again, base uh, the business as it has to be real. Mm -hmm. has, has to be something. I'm not. I'm not saying real based on real assets, but it has to be something that has a real basis for for the future. So is the challenge inspired by your friend? <laughs> Daniel, um, well, you know, it's it's. <laughs> I want to I want for him to get involved because he would know how to trade the market and, uh, but I think it's a little bit early because there are too many companies, there are too many uh, tokens on the market. There's just not enough liquidity. Just I would wait until the institutional investors would jump in, mm -hmm. and then I would invite him. But I'm, I'll talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you should talk to him. Uh, well, maybe I'll talk to him if he, if you speak to me. I will, he moved I will markets to before. <laughs> yes. He moved the markets before. Of course, yes. Yes. 
Uh, well, we've, we've heard uh, a lot in the past few weeks about market manipulation and how the price of crypto is heavily influenced by it. Um, have you come across anything that you, that you saw like blatantly was being manipulated that you can talk about? You know, I, uh, from what I'm standing, what my position is right now, I'm more focused on partner partnerships and uh, developing strategic relations. I wasn't really watching market closely mm -hmm. because uh, I understand uh, how the stock market works. With the small volumes, you can manipulate market very easily. Mm -hmm. I myself was trading the stock, not like intentionally, but uh, I bought a stock and it was just a few thousand dollars and it went up 4% mm -hmm. of one of the liquid stocks. Mm -hmm. So it just, uh, there is nothing abnormal in that mm -hmm. yeah and people uh, who invest they move on the news yeah so, and the news uh, in all the telegram channels one thing i wanted to mention maybe it sounds a little strange but i don't like telegram okay it's just not usable in my opinion how so because you, it get lost there's like hundreds of messages and hundreds of uh, airdrops and stuff <laughs> that goes into your yeah, it seems channels. to be the industry standard, but it's a bad standard. <laughs> it's it's not usable. Yes, I, I, I do I do agree with you on that. I think Slack did a better job than Telegram does, but then there were all those hacks that happened and people were scared. So I think this is the way if you to do the SEO, this is the one we should consider. I'm actually uh -huh. working, uh, discussing it with one of the projects that uh, are doing the better messenger and accumulation of all the things together wouldn't it be great to integrate a crm with a, a telegram like tool that would give marketers like a lot of you know um cutting edge technology and then integrate it and then implant it in your brain yeah, yeah. <laughs> implant it in your brain <laughs> all right so any final words of wisdom for for just, our listeners out there well i guess just don't, don't, don't get discouraged with the news that are negative about the market because the trend is positive. And, uh, you know, lo look at it maybe once in a while and join it if you like. As an investor or as a participant or maybe as the company that does the properly regulated initial coin offering. Do you think with all the, um, the, the um, professional investors coming into mm -hmm. this space, there is still... Uh, space for the regular person? Of course, that is just the same. Actually, ICO is much more open and part of the reason it became so successful because uh, you don't have these barriers of entry for the small investors versus the venture capital world where you cannot really enter without a few million dollars. Absolutely. All right, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much for inviting me, and Adriana. Let's go celebrate Russia's win yeah. over Spain. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> let's do this. All right. Thank you. Thanks. That was Kate Korokovich. I think I didn't do justice to Kate's expertise, to be honest. Um, we were surrounded by distractions and it was very hard to concentrate on that day. Uh, let us know what you think. If you want to reach out to Kate, please send me a message on LinkedIn or Twitter and I will introduce you uh, by email. Uh, Kate is not very active on social media. I am at A. Bellotti on Twitter and Adriana Bellotti on LinkedIn. Remember to subscribe and if you know anyone that would benefit from learning more about working in the crypto world, share your favorite episode with them. Um, let them know that there's a whole lot of opportunities out there. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you at the next block. Cheers. You. Yes, you. Did you enjoy today's episode? How about writing a review? That really helps with the podcast rankings. Go on, you know you want to. Help me out. Cheers.